Hi, I'm James, and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at fitting an additional 4 gigs of memory into our brand new Dell Inspiron 5567 laptop. So, first thing we need to do with this, and it should be, hopefully, a relatively simple process, we are going to flip over the machine like so, and to begin with we just have to go round and remove all of the screws from the base. Um, as normal I'm just going to take them out, I'm just going to place, place them over here in the order I've removed them. Um, I don't believe they're all different sizes but this way just if any of them are then it's easy enough to work out what came from where. So we, we've gone with this model and we're upgrading it to 8 gigs of memory. Um, I actually intentionally bought the base spec, first of all because I didn't feel the upgrade to a uh, smaller screw there, didn't feel the upgrade to uh, 8 gigabytes was particularly good value. Um, it was a lot cheaper to buy an additional module myself and fit it. Now obviously this has an impact on the warranty but with what I'm going to use this machine for I'm not too concerned. And also, the 8GB version of the machine only came with uh, a single 8GB module and because I want to use this laptop for performance testing with integrated graphics, I'm going to be testing in dual channel configurations. Um, not a fan of manufacturers habits of shipping things single channel, uh, unfortunately Dell have persisted across this entire range, not just the uh, the 4 gigabyte model. Um, basically dual channel memory doubles the memory bandwidth available to the processor and since the processor also has the graphics for this particular laptop built into it that then has a knock-on effect on the graphics performance of the machine which can actually be you know, up to sort of 30% degradation in performance. Um, so I always, yeah, for machines got socketed memory I'll slot memory rather than soldered down. I'll always make sure if I can I've got a dual channel configuration in the machine. It is at least nice that Dell do tell you when you're ordering the machine what the memory configuration is. A lot of manufacturers just state the amount in there and then you get a nasty surprise when you come to run something and wonder why the performance is well below what it should be. Um, I also don't like it when manufacturers put uh, unbalanced configurations, say 6 gigs with a 2 and a 4, or um, 12 gigs with a 4 and an 8, as that can give some interesting performance issues as well. So with all of those removed now, the next thing to do is slide out the DVD drive. That was held in by that screw there and possibly that one there as well, although I'm not sure on that side. And underneath that we have three more small screws, uh, these are sort of small flat headed screws, same screwdriver seems to do the job for these, we could possibly go down a size on the tip for them but that's doing the job okay. Um, I actually don't worry too much on the warranty side on this as well because if we're careful and using our plastic pry tool we shouldn't leave any sort of marks, obviously if you do have an issue and your warranty is voided that's you know done on your own off your own back. Now with those screws removed what I'm going to do is just turn the laptop around so I can see a little better and the service manual says to start in this corner and we are going to slide in here with our plastic pry tool and just begin unlatching the base of the machine. So with that corner done I'm now going to then try and go around the side here and latch there and then with that opened up it should be easier to Go around and get some more. And then 
from there. We can actually just with nails, what may actually be. So now with the machine this side up, you can see we've already lifted this side. This isn't really the best way to be working with the machine orientated this way. Um, I have started to go along here when I turned it over a bit. Um, but what we want to do is just go along this front edge and start separating the clips by sliding the pry tool in through that gap. And basically if you just press down it pushes the black plastic forward and allows the top panel to pop out. What we're going to do now is for the final section we're just going to flip the machine over and with it all lifting up now what we want to do is just pull from this end and the final clips should come out there and that gets us inside the machine so I'm just going to turn that round so I think it looks better this way um, so what we have here single DDR4 module we are going to add our second 4 gig module. This is a crucial uh, 4 gig DDR4 2400 module. Um, so that's a Micron DDR4 2400 module in there, but that should give us a match pair in terms of performance and should all work nicely. Um, now, if we were, I'm not going to do it yet, but if we were going to fit the SSD drive into this, we would first of all release this cable. We can then move that back out the way. We're going to take our screwdriver and we have, it looks like, three screws retaining this. So with those removed, we should now be able to lift up the hard drive. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to disconnect the SATA cable there because it's going to be easier to work with when we aren't tethered to the machine. So to pop that out we just want to get a little catch lifted there, pop that out, then pull that connector off, so that gets us our drive free, and then we have four screws holding it into this caddy, so we can take those out and attach and fit in an SSD into there, and now because I'm not doing that right now, I'm just going to reattach that and reconnect to the hard drive so if we wanted to remove the CPU cooler we have one, two, three, four screws there and then an additional there which would remove the fan and heatsink as a single unit and then finally the battery it looks like you have this bracket here which would need to come off a screw here and that one is shared with the hard drive so it would be a case of those four screws connector here connecting to the hard drive itself and then you could remove uh, sorry the battery and then you could remove that anyway i hope you found this video interesting um memory upgrade and hard drive change on this laptop relatively simple um in terms of getting things back together i'm just going to the only real thing other than putting screws in is just how to refit the base. So if we put back in these connectors for the back in these screws for the hard drive, this slots into here. Or the little daughter board over there and relatch that. So finally to refit the base what we want to do is we want to start at this end with the majority of the ports on it and we want to line up this back corner so that it fits in round by the hinge and then 
press down. Then we are going to flip the machine over, open it up and press the top panel down so it clips into the base like so. And with that done, all that should remain now, just making sure we are happy with how all of that is fitted in. All that remains now is to flip it over, put the screws back in, and hopefully everything should be good. So using this we've gone to 8GB of memory in a dual channel configuration, and if you want to change the hard drive or fit an SSD as well, then same process is involved. I hope you found this video useful. Um, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see some of the performance testing we are going to be doing with the i3-7100U in this machine. And uh, let us know what you'd like to see in the future. Thanks for watching.